Welcome to the Queen Elizabeth's Academy Easter service. I'm really grateful for this opportunity to have this conversation with you, although it's only one way because obviously we're not at school doing our normal collective worship. But nevertheless, I wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you about our nine core values, our Christian values, and also to deliver an Easter service of sorts where we have a look at some scriptures from the Bible. And I also want to pray for you as a student, I want to pray for the staff, and I want to pray for the families represented at our academy. So I thought we'd talk a little bit about our core values because I don't know about you, there's never been a better time to try, or rather to be forced to try, because of our lockdown situation, and live out some of these core values. These are important, as it says here, all day long, every day. But as we find ourselves in this quite worrying time, we find ourselves locked down, we find ourselves living in different ways day to day, it's completely different to what we're normally used to. And things like good manners and empathy, truthfulness, togetherness, nurture, joy, wisdom, skills, forgiveness and reconciliation and justice and equality are really important as we live in the community together in, in an isolated way. I can't think of a greater time to ponder these really important values and to try and live them out. And it's a really tough thing to do. As I mentioned, we're experiencing a massive amount of change and great challenges. Some of us are unable to see family members, some of us have sick uh, family members, and some of us are experiencing great tragedy at this time. It's a real challenge for all of us. I want to just pause to think about what can we rely on in times of great change and upheaval? What voices are actually positive towards us? Now, I don't know about you, but I've been spending a lot more time on the internet. I've been researching the coronavirus. I've been finding out about cures or vaccines or antiviral drugs or where the virus came from. And sometimes as we spend our time finding out about these things and thinking about the future, it can actually bring more worry and fear. And it's really good, as I was reading on the NHS website the other day, to try and reframe our thoughts about positive things. And that is really good advice. That when we start to begin to worry about the situation that we find ourselves in, we need to look to things that we know are true and that we know are certain. Like the fact that there are people there for you and there's people there for me in my life. I found a greater connection with my family at this time. This idea of togetherness, which is one of our core values, this idea of empathy. As we live in a small house together with five people in it, we have to show empathy and good manners to each other. Otherwise things fall apart a little bit. So what voices are helpful? Some of those voices that we see on social media or you know, on the news media, some of them are designed to stir up strife, anxiety, and to make us worry. And I want to just encourage you at this time to just take a step back, to focus on those things that we know are true, those things that we know are certain, those things that we know are stable, like people in our lives, our family, our parents, our grandparents, our brothers and sisters that have been there for us to spend time with them, to spend time talking to them, to spend time uh, using technology to connect with them. Now, I for one, I'm, I'm praying for all the people in my family that are vulnerable to this virus. And I'm praying for everybody at QEA and your families on a daily basis, because I believe that God wants to reveal himself to each of us. Now, as I mentioned, this is an Easter service. One of the things that brings me great comfort, one of the things that brings me ultimate comfort when I look at the world as it is and what I'm experiencing now, is this idea of the Easter message. Now, of course, in my house, like no doubt your house, we're gonna have a few chocolates, definitely a lot less than normal because we can't really get access to that many. So my son and my daughter have got an Easter egg and my wife and my little daughter are sharing that. But we also, as Christians, recognize that Easter is about a much bigger thing than that. And really, you know, I want to share an Easter reading with you from the Bible. And this really hits the nail on the head of what Easter is all about. It's about the resurrection. It's about Jesus being dead and rising from the grave. Now, Paul was one of the apostles and he wrote to a church in a city called Corinth. And he said these things, trying to emphasize the power of the resurrection and all that can mean for our lives. And he says this, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, 
but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass this, the saying which is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? So Paul is saying here what the significance, the bottom line significance of the resurrection is. And he talks about us having mortal bodies. And I don't know about you, but I've never felt more mortal or susceptible to injury than at the moment. Because we know that there's this virus out there that is hurting people. So Paul gives this amazing thought that our mortal bodies, which are corruptible, they can receive disease, virus, they can break down. They will put on incorruption and our mortal bodies will put on immortality because of what Jesus has done. He even goes as far to say this, death, where is your sting? Hades, which means the grave, where is your victory? Because what Jesus did when he rose from the grave was not just something crazy and amazing and cool that people back then saw. It's something that had meaning and significance for the rest of days. So Paul says that when Jesus died and rose again, he defeated death. It has no more sting over those that are connected with Christ. He says about the grave, Hades, where is your victory? Now, Paul's saying something amazing here. He's saying that death and uh, the grave doesn't have to have dominion over us. It doesn't rule over us. We have hope beyond the grave. Now, as a Christian, I don't wait until heaven to have that hope. That hope of the resurrection affects me now. It means that when I think about all that's going on in the world, I can focus on something that is stable in my life. Now, there's nothing more stable than something or someone that can even defeat death. There's nothing more amazing to think about God that loves us so much he would send his only son to die in our place so that we can have eternal life. And he even did that. He died in our place and then defeated death. There's nothing that brings me more peace and comfort, especially at this time, to know that Jesus had victory over even the grave. It's amazing. But I recognise that not everybody's in the same position. Not everybody believes that. And some people would say, well, you know, I wasn't there. I didn't see that. And I've got to say, I wasn't there. I didn't see that either. But I have experienced Jesus' resurrection. As I pray and as I focus on him, as I give my life to him, he is changing me from the inside. He helps me not to worry about death. He helps me not to worry about my life. He helps me to take a considerate thought about things that I'm doing. He helps me to be wise, but I no longer have that fear. Paul talks about actually people that were there and that did see Jesus. Now, as I said, I wasn't there. I've experienced Jesus' resurrection through connecting with him and making my, him my Lord. But Paul says this amazing thing later on in that chapter of 1 Corinthians 15. He says this, I delivered to you that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, by the twelve, and after that he was seen by over 500 brethren at once. And the greater part of these people remain alive to the present, but some have died and fallen asleep. And after that he was seen by James, and then by all the apostles. Then last of all he was seen by me, as one born out of due time. And so Paul here is citing this amazing piece of evidence that hundreds, 500 people at once, had actually seen Jesus uh, rise from the grave and walking and speaking to him. People met Jesus walking, people met him sitting, people met him eating. He was doing things, he was talking to people. It wasn't a one-off vision that people saw and then it was gone. People experienced life. And just to focus in, Paul, the guy that wrote this, hated Jesus for most of his life. If you've done RE at school, uh, you'll know that Paul used to be called Saul and he was a persecutor, a hater of Christians, but he met Jesus and he did have a vision of him and he was changed forever. But all these other people that, Jesus, uh, that Paul talks about here, James, for example, James, Jesus' brother, wanted Jesus to die at one point. He didn't like Jesus. He didn't believe that Jesus was the son of God until one thing changed, the resurrection. 
after the resurrection. James, his own brother, believed that his brother was the Son of God. We could talk about Thomas that would not believe at all until he actually personally saw Jesus. And Jesus came to Thomas, even when Thomas wasn't searching for him, and said, Thomas, look, see my wounds, feel my wounds. And Thomas said, my Lord, and my God. Guys, the resurrection is amazing. There's evidence for the resurrection, but I'm here to talk to you about how powerful it is. That hope that we can have that's beyond the grave, but that is relevant for now, that Jesus can help us, he can heal us, he can bring us peace even at this time. So I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your families. And I would encourage you at this time that you are on the internet, research the resurrection, research the Easter story. Type in evidence for the resurrection. Type in what does the Christian belief about the resurrection mean? And I'm sure you'll find an interesting education. And I really hope that some of you will come to realise some greater truth about, about Jesus, that you'll get to know about Jesus in a greater way, even in a personal way. So let me pray as we finish this Easter collective worship together. God, help us to keep loving and learning in these times. Learning how to be wise and learning about your love. Learning how to be safe and how to love those around us. Learning how to be wise about our thoughts and to be able to find joy in the midst of this huge challenge. Thank you for the stability and help that we find in our family, in our community. Thank you for the support from our school and from the government. God, may you give wisdom and strength to all the key workers who are helping the sick and searching for vaccines and treatments. Help us to remember what is true and certain in these uncertain times. Help us to remember your true and certain love in Jesus, shown in power through the resurrection. Thank you that you endured the cross. Help us to endure at this time also. And I want to pray for each of our families and the staff and the students at QEA. Dear God, I pray your protection over us day to day. Help us to be safe, Lord, and look after us. I pray a special blessing as families gather together this Easter time. No doubt with certain family members missing because of isolation, but we pray, God, that you would help us to be a community. Pray for every student in this school that you would bless them and look after them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys. I hope you have a great Easter time, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. God bless.